Now then, Vinyl Monkey here again. Um, I hope you can see me alright. I hope I've got the camera set up right. Having to stand up this week, we've had the furniture moved around. I haven't got, a, uh, I haven't got an armchair in my uh, den at the moment. So, uh, hope it's in focus. Hope you can see me okay. Um, bloody Christmas, yeah. Christmas. All changing. Everything. So, it'll soon be over, never mind. But, uh, yeah, 1973. And again, I've split them into British and uh, European, British, Irish, European and North American next week or later this week. Uh, just the, the huge amount of quality albums in 1973. I think it almost matches 1971 in terms of the strength in, in my collection anyway. But uh, I've had to put loads back up there that I'm not even going to mention. Perfectly good uh, albums. But uh, I'm just going to mention some of the some of the ones that di didn't quite make the top ten. And uh, just in case any of you are interested in some of them. But uh, this was a year of real big hitters. I mean... Every uh, every one of the four Beatles produced quality albums in this year, uh, including Ringo's eponymous, uh, maybe Ringo's strongest actually, but that didn't make it. Um, this is a brilliant Irish band, Horselips, the Tain. Uh, Horselips are sort of pioneers of, or opened the door for maybe Celtic rock, but uh, great band, yeah, blending sort of Irish folk, prog rock, yeah, great stuff. Talking of Ireland, yeah, Van Morrison, my favourite artist perhaps of all time. Uh, lovely album, Hard Knows the Highway. I've left it out of my top ten. Maybe not one of Van's absolute strongest, but still a great album. Uh, T-Rex had a, uh, another great album out, Tanks, in this year. Another one of my favourite bands. Procolarum had a, this is Grand Hotel, Procolarum had a series of great uh, albums. They were, they were maybe never really... You know, rec given enough recognition, I think, for the quality of their uh, stuff coming out at this time. But Grand Hotel, another good, good album. Uh, Al Stewart, past, present, and future. Maybe not as strong as his most famous one, Year of the Cat, but uh, a sort of concept album where he's uh, taking a doing writing a song about a, a, every decade in the uh, in the twentieth century. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, not quite good album though, really. This one was one that was in everybody's house at the time, Tubular Bells, and uh, I, I don't know, I found it dull these days. I'm, I couldn't I couldn't include it in my top ten. I, I do appreciate what Mike Oldfield was trying to do and the, what a good musician he, he, he was, is, uh, and all, well, is, sorry, he's touring uh, shortly, I think, but uh, I couldn't, it's not one of my ten favourites. I mean, just to emphasise, this is my ten favourites, not what I think were the you know, best sellers or the most influential or the most important or whatever. These are just these are just my ten favourites from nineteen seventy three. Genesis, good album. I mean the great track, I know what I like in your wardrobe, selling England by the pound, but I very rarely listen to it to be fair. If I was gonna to listen to one Genesis one it probably would be Lamb Lies Down. But uh, the Strobes, I mentioned them last time, they had a good run of albums and this one bursting at the seams. That one's really canny as well. Elton had uh, two albums out, two double albums out in this year. And I haven't included Don't Shoot Me in my top ten. I'm only the piano player. Brian Ferry, what a great, this is his first um, solo album. What a great album of covers it is. It's uh, he really, really, everyone from Dylan to, uh, oh, goodness me, yeah, with well, Beatles. Um, yeah. A lot of uh, a lot of sort of old uh, sort of classics, but uh, brilliant album. Yeah, look out for that one if you haven't heard it. It is really really good. Not quite in the top ten. And then this one, I'm expecting the foundations of the World Wide Web to shake. That when I announced that I haven't included Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd in my top ten, and I I, 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 I was assuming it would be in there, but I've been listening to everything again, and I, I've got to say, every time I listen to this. I like it a little bit less. I, I, you know, there are some breathe and does and them and time and those. Yeah, they, they they sort of they do evoke a sort of mood and there's some quality music in there. But I do find it irritating. I can't bear the track money and that sound. The you know the sort of cash register, the ca the cash till jingling and the the clock ticking and those sort of sounds. I just I just find them 
more and more irritating, which might be to do with how ubiquitous this album was at the time. Uh, but I haven't included it anyway, Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. So what have I included? Well, just excuse me, I'll reach over here. Um, at number 10, uh, this is Alan Hull's, uh, one of Alan Hull's solo albums, Alan Hull of Lindisfarne, obviously this is Pipe Dream with the, I think it's René Magritte uh, painting on the front, there's Alan Hull in the, in the middle there, and this just showcases really what a quality singer-songwriter Alan Hull was, I just love his plaintive singing and his, his sort of down-to-earth way with words, um, breakfast, um, chorus is a great song, Country Gentleman's Wife, brilliant, Numbers, uh, the drug song, just really really strong songs all the way through it, quality stuff, that's my number 10, Alan Hull, Pipe Dream. My number 9, this is a, which way up is it, that way, this is a Dutch uh, four piece band, Golden Earring, um, I suppose most famous over here for the, the, the single, the hit single they had, Radar Love, and there's an extended version of Radar Love on this album. The album's called Moon Tan, um, and it's just a really, really good album. I mean, apart from sort of guitars, bass, drums, singer, they're, they're also, this four piece also includes sax, flute, um, synthesizers, and you know, at times on this album, you think bloody LT Rex have met Jethro Tull and got together. It's a really, really different, interesting sound. Uh, it's, a, it's a great sound and album in itself, but uh, the extended version of Radar Love is, is brilliant. And I love the track uh, Big Tree Blue Sea, which gets really sort of quite, uh, quite into proggy territory. But uh, that's my number nine, Golden Earring Moon Tan. My number eight is Elton John's other album he had out in 1973. This is Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Uh, again, a double album full of just great songs. You, you, you're familiar with many, many of them. Obviously, Candle in the Wind, Benny and the Jets, songs like that. But all pretty strong songs. Not my favourite Elton album, but an album just really, really listenable, quality pop stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, many people's favourite probably, but uh, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, Elton John, my number eight. My number seven, this is Led Zeppelin's Houses of the Holy, Led Zeppelin's fifth album. Their first album to have a, a, a title that isn't Led Zeppelin, I suppose. Um, um, and some of the songs on here are fantastic. The first three tracks on side on side one, including Rain Song, just just I think it's Zeppelin at their very very best. But there are, I mean, I, I I have a few problems with this album. Otherwise, it probably would have been a bit higher in my uh, ranking. It is a good album. I do enjoy it. It is quality. But there are a couple of weak songs on there. Um, what is it? The uh, the the crunch the the, the crunch and. Uh, the, the reggae, the, the, they do a sort of reggae rip-off type thing, which, I don't know, it doesn't really work for me anyway. Uh, the cover, I don't know, this is the Giant's Causeway in uh, Northern Ireland um, with photographs of naked children. Actually, it was, I think, just two naked children that they've sort of repeated on it. And I'm just, I don't know, I'm not sure about the cover. Did, did Led Zeppelin really need to put naked children on a cover to stand out in the um in the record bins i guess not but uh anyway yeah not not that keen on the cover uh the other thing is the words they've actually for the first time led zeppelin have printed the sort of words to this and yeah all i would say is don't look at them really uh, you know just listen to it i mean plant's brilliant voice just marries beautifully with the four the other three musicians in led zeppelin but Look at the words, they're bloody dreadful, really are, and to have them in print in front of you, just, uh, it just sort of reminds you how uh, <laughs> iffy, really, the uh, a lot of the lyrics to Zeppelin songs were, which I don't think generally doesn't matter, because it's the sonic experience of Led Zeppelin, rather than the uh, any sort of meaning or anything in the words, but uh, anyway, there we are, that's my, I've, I've lost track of where I'm at, number... 
10987 I think that is Led Zeppelin's Houses of the Holy My number 6 uh, The Stones had an album out this year This is Goat's Head Soup um, This is Stones at their most raunchy Their most murky Their most sleazy uh, it is really a sort of dirty, mucky, murky album, but um, all good songs and a few really, really great songs. Angie, um, Coming Down Again, uh, Heartbreaker, Winter, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, really strong music, a great mix of horns and uh, keyboards particularly, like they had three different keyboard players in there, Billy Preston, Nicky Hopkins, Ian Stewart. Um, yeah, just a great rock and roll band. One of their best albums. I think it's in their top, for me, it's in their top half a dozen albums. Maybe not as strong as its predecessor, Exile on Main Street. But nonetheless, a really good album. Goat's Head Soup, my number six. My number five, this is Roxy Music's second album, For Your Pleasure. Um, here's the band inside again. Um, Another cover along the, the same sort of start. Well, all the first four albums had, you know, models and glamour uh, featuring on the on the cover, um, and this just carries on from where the first album left off. Really, I'd, I'd say this is a slightly stronger album. Um, side won't particularly do the Strand Beauty Queen Strictly Confidential editions. Are you really really strong? Um, and you know, very sort of, I say, croony, sort of very different voice alongside Eno's sort of bizarre, sort of different musical palette. Uh, just bring a really different feel to this. Nobody, it sounded like nobody else. Um, unfortunately, Eno and Ferry. Their, their relationship uh, couldn't sustain beyond this album so I think Brian Eno, I think he left after this one but uh, this is a really strong album, it's my number five, Roxy Music for your pleasure. I mentioned the four uh, Beatles all produced albums and uh, actually the only one I haven't got on uh, vinyl is uh, John Lennon's Mind Games which I have on CD and that might have nudged might have nudged the top 10 probably would have done but what has definitely is this great album from George Harrison Living in the Material World this is my number 4 uh, this is George's second album so it was a couple of years two and a half years maybe later than All Things Must Pass um, and it's it's gorgeous, it's maybe more reflective, it's maybe more spiritual, say. Um, there are less, there's, there's a smaller cast of musicians, um, you know, he hasn't got Clapton on there playing lead guitar and everything, and I think that gives much more room for George's singing and playing, and that is what really, I mean, there's strong, really strong songs on here. Um, I mean, I think for me, maybe the title track is possibly the weakest song, but apart from that, really, really strong songs. And George just sings and plays them absolutely beautifully. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a gorgeous, uh, really, really beautiful album. George Harrison, Living in the Material World, my number three, uh, four, sorry. My number three, uh, this is King Crimson's fifth album, um, Lark's Tongues in Aspic. Um, it's six uh, tracks a really extended opening track the title track uh, is absolutely stunning um, again like the first album which I mentioned um, lots of dynamic range that sort of loud and quiet parts and um, rock and folky and classical parts um, and this is I think this is prog rock at its best I mean I I really started to struggle very early on with Yes, Genesis, CLP, and I didn't, although I had their early stuff, I didn't follow them and I stopped listening to them and I got rid of all their stuff. But King Crimson are the, are the prog band, which I think remains by far the most, the most interesting. Perhaps they were the most experimental. Certainly had a huge turnover of members. I mean, I think there's only Robert Fripp, I think, surviving... Uh, from the first album to this album 
Um, but I just love the sound of this, and it's one of those albums that it's it's complex. You get new things from it every time you listen to it. I love the drumming on this album, particularly uh, Bill Bruford's drumming is uh, is really really stands out for me. But uh, an exceptional album. Uh, my number three, King Crimson, Larks, Tongues in Aspic. My number two, still on the sort of proggy theme, this is Jethro Tull's A Passion Play. Um, I mentioned this in my top ten Jethro Tull albums of the 70s, if you want to have a look at that uh, film. But this is, I think, alongside Thick as a Brick, this is, for me, Tull's masterpiece. Uh, this, unlike, I mentioned Dark Side of the Moon, every time I listen to it, I, I, I like it a, bit, a little bit less. Well, this one, every time I listen to it, I just like it more. There are new passages, different passages which I've maybe not noticed quite, which stand out at different times. Um, it's, as I say, it's, it's complex, but it's really, really listenable. Um, the only passage that I struggle with, I think I mentioned this before, uh, is, is the sort of hair and its spectacles. Although even that, on, on the listening I gave this this week, uh, was maybe starting to register a little bit more positively, but it's a brilliant album, a passion play, Jethro Tull, my number two. I'm leaving my number one, and I'm really, really surprised at this. I mean, I was surprised with some of the albums I rejected and put out of my top ten. I thought they would have been in there. If you'd have asked me last week what would be my number one, I definitely wouldn't have said this, but I've played all these albums at least once. And this one... Paul McCartney and Wings, Band on the Run. Uh, I've just got it as my number one. It's just, I mean, he's my least favourite Beatle in terms of solo output following the Beatles, I think. But this is just a brilliant, brilliant pop album. I mean, the first three tracks on side one, Band on the Run, Jet, Bluebird, uh, oh, just absolutely nail it. It's just uplifting, it's positive, it's feel-good. It's really, really gorgeous quality, high quality pop music at its very, very best. And that standard is pretty much sustained right the way through the uh, through the album. Um, yeah, fantastic album. My number one from 1973. Brackets, British and European. Uh, Wings, Band on the Run. Okay, well, thanks for listening. Uh, and next week, or maybe later this week, if I can get around to it, we'll be uh, looking at 1983, the North America ones. Cheers. Bye.